Okay, we have a quiz tomorrow, so we're doing a quiz with whiteboard review. I recorded a little bit late here, so here's what we're trying to do. We're finding the inverse of this function. 2x minus 3 over 3x plus 2. Two steps to find an inverse. I'm just going to start over again. Sorry, guys. Two steps to find inverse. Step one is flipping x and y. So it's going to be x is equal to 2y minus 3 over 3y plus 2. We want to get y's by itself, so we're going to multiply both sides by 3y plus 2 to get that y out of the denominator. I can't just divide by x because it still would be super messy, so we're going to distribute this x in. So 3xy plus 2x is equal to 2y minus 3. Now I want to get the y's to the same side, so I'm going to move this 2x over and this 2x, 2y to this side. So we get 3xy minus 2y is equal to negative 2x minus 3. Now I'm trying to get y by itself. Both of these parts have a y in it. So what can I do if both things have a y in it? Factor it out. We're going to take the y out in front. So if I take a y out, I'm left with 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And then to finish that thing, we are going to divide by 3x minus 2. Divide by 3x minus 2. That is my answer. Negative 2x minus 3 all over 3x minus 2. That is how we find an inverse. We flipped x and y. We solved for y. We had to get all the y's on the same side. So we had to do some distributing and some factoring in there. But it's not as crazy as it seems when you work your way through it. Questions on finding an inverse. Flip x and y, solve for y. Let's do another one. Let's solve some logs. Solve that thing. See what you can do. Hold up your answers when you get done. If we're solving this thing, Matthew, what'd you get rid of first? Log base 4. Raise both sides to a base of 4 because that's the opposite of log. Okay, so we get 1 over 32 is equal to 4 to the x minus 2 power. Now as we look at this, the best way to solve it would be to rewrite the bases. What base should I rewrite both sides to be? 2. And so the, no, the only thing that students have really missed today is that. 2 squared times x minus 2. They're, they're fine with that. You guys can do that all day long. Over here, it's going to be 2. It's a fraction, so I know my exponent needs to be negative, and 2 to the 5th gets me 32. So we're good to that point. And then the thing we do, and I do the same thing, is I get here and you forget to distribute that 2. Don't forget to distribute that 2. That has been the, the one mistake we've made here. We get negative 4. We add 4 over. And divide by 2. Divide by 2. X is negative 1 half. Questions on that one? All right, let's try another one. Let's graph some logs. Graph log base 3 of x plus 6. Graph that thing on your board. See what you can do. So as we look at this thing, we are trying to graph a log. Show me with your arms. What does an exponential graph look like? Exponential. An ex exponential. An exponential graph looks like that. Show me with your arm. What does a logarithmic graph look like? Logarithmic, you should still use both arms. One arm is going down, and the other arm is going flat. That is what a logarithmic graph looks like. What kind of asymptote does a logarithmic graph have? Vertical. vertical. Logarithmic graph has a vertical asymptote because this part right here can't be zero or negative. So normally, there's a horizontal asymptote right here at zero. Or I'm sorry, vertical asymptote right there at zero, but it's moved. Which direction did it move? Left. This plus 6 is inside the parentheses, so it's moving us to less 6. So that means that's where my new vertical asymptote is. Okay, remember when we talked about domain of a logarithm graph on the other day? This thing has to be positive. It has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than negative 6. So that means there's a vertical asymptote there that I don't touch. Okay, then we're graphing logarithms. There's an anchor dot, one to the right. It didn't move up and down at all, so it's right there on the line. The first one is one to the right. The next one would be how many to the right? 3, because it's a base of 3, and then it would be 9. Start flat, boom, that is my logarithmic graph. Questions on that one? Nah, I don't like that. Solve the equation analytically. Trying to solve for x, see what you can do. Solve the equation analytically. So when we look at this thing, we see we're solving this thing analytically. I mean, we're trying to get X by itself, trying not to use our calculator. 
what base would be the best base to use here? Three. So I'm going to rewrite nine as three squared. Three to the seven X is equal to three. Oh, it was one ninth. So what's my new exponent need to be? Negative two times the original one. Negative because it flipped to be a fraction and two because three squared is nine. Okay. Once we've done that, we are combining them to a single base. Over here, it's easy. It's just negative four X. What do I need to do with these two exponents if I am multiplying their bases together? We add exponents when we're multiplying bases. So over here, it's going to be 2 plus 7x. Okay? So on the left side, we're going to cancel. Then we're going to solve. Subtract 7x. Divide by negative 11. x is equal to 2 over 11. And it's negative. Good there. Let's play a game. Here we go. A good question that we struggled with earlier today. Find the domain of the function. We're doing the domain of logs. Be careful on the second one. Think about what you are doing and what does that mean? Okay. Think about what the domain of a log is and what that has to be. Try those two. Be careful on the second one. Last period, no one got the second one correct. Take some time and go. All right. Here we go. Domain of a log. When we talked about this, and I know we talked about it in passing, but we... Just like a square root, when we have a square root, we have an argument of a square root. What is the argument of a square root? It has to be what? Positive or zero. Like that's the rule. We take, if it's a square root, we take whatever's underneath the square root and we say that has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's how we find the domain because you can't take the square root of negative. The same thing is true with logs. When we have a log, the argument of a log has to be what? greater than zero, not equal to. You can't take the log of zero, okay? Because remember, there's a vertical asymptote right there at zero that I can't touch. So we take whatever's underneath or whatever's in that argument and we say that value has to be greater than zero. So for this first one, we did fine. 4x is greater than negative eight, divide by four, divide by four. X is greater than negative two, okay? That is the domain of this original function. We took the argument, we set it greater than zero and solved. Let's use that same premise on the second one. X squared plus 9X plus 18. That thing right there has to be greater than 0. So if I were to solve that, I'm going to factor it. X plus, sorry, X plus 6, X plus 3. X is equal to negative 6 and negative 3. Okay? That's great. But that's not my answer. I want to know when am I greater than zero? This is just like a rational. That these are the two spots that it's going to be what? That's where it's equal to zero. So if you thought about this graph right here, that is when I'm equal to zero. Negative six and negative three. It's a parabola. Show me with your arms. What's this parabola going to look like? It's going to look like this. So my parabola is going to do that. So the question is, when am I greater than zero? Okay, so probably the best way of attacking this question is doing a sign chart, okay, just like we did before. And so let's think about a sign chart because, again, this is going to be something we use in calculus all the time. Pick a number greater than negative three, okay, like zero. If I plugged in zero into this problem, it would get me a positive 18. So that is positive. So that is part of my answer. I want to be greater than zero. Yeah, when I'm greater than negative three, you pick any number greater than negative three, you're going to get a positive number. Pick a number less than negative six. Well, sometimes the easiest one to plug into would be this factored form. So let's plug in a number less than negative six. So what's a number less than negative six? Negative 10. If I plugged in negative 10 into this right here, would it be positive or negative? Negative. If I plugged in negative 10 right here, would it be positive or negative? Negative. If I took two negatives and I multiplied them together, what would it get me? So that's going to be a positive right there as well. So when else am I greater than zero? When I'm less than negative six. And then pick a number in between, like negative four. If I plugged in negative four here, it would be positive. If I plugged in negative four here, it would be negative. Positive times a negative would get me negative. So my answer to this question is X needs to be less than negative six, okay? Or X needs to be greater than negative three. That is the domain. X is less than negative six or greater than negative three because that is a value that is going to get me a positive number when I plug into this. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't matter how you write it, like you can be like negative one, 
No, that's fine. I, as long as you've got the answer, I'm, I'm good with it. Questions here? A little bit of a challenge, but you can handle it. Let's try another one. Solve it. If I want to get rid of log base 25, Sam K, what'd you do to get rid of log base 25? Good. A, a base of 25 on both sides. Good. Base of 25 on both sides of an exponential. That's going to cancel that out. I get 3x plus 35 is equal to 25 to the 3 halves power. Okay. Again, I'm I'm making you do this problem because this is the number one thing my calc kids, when they don't get to use their calculator, they all start crying about it. Okay. You can handle this. 25 to the 3 halves power. 25 to the 3 halves power is the same thing as 25. What? Square rooted, because it's a two. The number on bottom, that is the root. So it is a square root, and then you cube that. So what is the square root of 25? Five, and then it's five to the third power, which you might not be perfect at, but five to the third power. Five squared is 25, times five again is 125. Okay, so just recognize that you can do that. That's normally the biggest issue. Students just see a fractional exponent and act like they can't do it. Minus 35, minus 35. 3x is 90, so x is 30. Questions there? Mm, what other of these do we need to do? Yeah, this was one that we struggled with a little bit earlier. Find the inverse of this thing. Find the inverse. Y equals negative natural log of 2 minus x plus 5. Okay, a lot of stuff going on. I made it as hard as I could. That way, if you can do this one, you can do them all. But think, you've got rid of, got to get rid of layer by layer until you get X by itself, or Y by itself in that case. See what you can do. Let's, let's do this one together a little bit. If you're already done, great, but we struggled with this one a lot in my last class, so I just want to make sure we can do it. We're finding the inverse. What's the first step of finding inverse? Switch X and Y. So X is going to be equal to the negative natural log of 2 minus Y plus 5. Okay, then all we're doing is solving. We're trying to get Y by itself. Okay, and so when I'm teaching more base level classes, I talk about this all the time. PEMDAS in reverse. Anytime you're trying to get a letter by itself, it's order of operations in reverse. Okay, we want to get rid of layer by layer. So if we do that here, that means we are trying to add or subtract from the Y side first. What could I add or subtract from the Y side? The five. We're going to get rid of that five. So we are going to subtract that five over. So that was step one. We, boom, did that. Then we are multiplying or dividing. Is there anything being multiplied or divided on the Y side that I need to get rid of? The negative. There's a negative right there. So I need to divide by a negative. So I'm going to divide both sides by a negative. So it becomes negative X plus five. So I got rid of the multiplying and divided. Now I have exponents. Well, logarithms are exponents. Okay, they're the inverses. They fall into the same category. So now we're doing this one, Exponent, exponentials, exponents. I want to get rid of natural log. How do I get rid of natural log? E, I'm going to raise both sides to a base of E. That's going to cancel. So I get E to the negative X plus 5 equals 2 minus Y. Cool, we did the exponents. Then we're doing what's inside the parentheses. So now we're just working from here, and we just keep working. Subtract the 2. And what do you think I do to finish? Multiply by a negative. Now, if I'm multiplying by a negative, that's just going to change this base to be negative, and it's going to change that to be positive, too. But there's my final answer. I made one as hard as physically possible, because if you can do that, you can do them all. Don't let that one be weird to you. Questions on something we did today? 